coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Bangy Pam, man. I appreciate the love. Boom, 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 boom. I appreciate the support. We out here, 33, 33 years of prison stores. We rolling. We pushing this positive energy. We trying to get it done, man. We on the road to 100K. Let's go, let's go, let's get it. We almost had 91,000. That's 9,000. There's 9,000 and some change left, man. Let's go. Let's do it. I believe we can do it as soon as possible. Can't do it without y'all. It's a team sport. Let's go. Let's get it, man. Big love to the nation on the back end of this video. Let's get into it. Let's go. Oh, man. If you're a part of TBP Nation by now, I know y'all already know who Southside Block is. Uh, talked about him on a couple of these videos. Just so happened I get a phone call today from one of my old comrades is locked up. And uh, he bring up block name. So he been locked up himself uh, for the past couple of years. And I had to run down to him what the whole situation was about block. Um, sad story, but this is what made me, you know, think about block. So I just was putting it in perspective and just thinking about the situation, man. I, I, I got to ask myself this question, man. Is block... You know, is he lucky or is he cursed? You know, and that's a crazy question. But when you think about block, it's a question that you really got to ask yourself. There's not too many people walking around in this world, man, <clears throat> that was locked up for a murder or something. They got a life sentence. And it's foul play in your case. And you come up out of that. You locked in with a life sentence and you come up out of that in a couple of years because it was foul play in your case. And then you get out and you get another capital offense and you lock back up with another life sentence and you get out again. There's not too many people on the earth walking around that, that can actually say that. You know, that they got out of, out of prison twice on a life sentence. You know, um, different life sentences. And then end up back in prison again. There's not too many people. And you're still alive and you're still breathing, you know. So, you know, you got to say you lucky to be able to get out the first time. Because a lot of people, especially in Virginia, you may not get out on the life sentence. It's not guaranteed. A lot of people don't know that. You don't automatically have to get out on the life sentence. There's no release date on a life sentence you literally have to make parole or get a part or get back in court and get your time you know reduced or something but there's no guarantee that you would get out of prison if you got a life sentence in virginia i cannot speak for other states in virginia there's no guarantee so when there's no guarantee and most people they got life sentences in virginia do 20 30 40 50 some astronomical numbers so for Block to get out on a life sentence, not once, but twice, that's got to be some type of favor in him, man. But then you got to say, is he cursed because, you know, he ended up back in prison again? Who God only knows if he'll get out again. God only knows that. A lot of people will have their own opinion and say this, that, or the third, but God only knows if he will ever see the streets again. But, man, when you think about dudes like Block, man, it's just... <clears throat> It's unreal because you got to look at the situation. I put it in perspective about myself. I did 33 straight years. I was, I was, within me doing my 33 straight years, I was with Block the first time before he went home. Um, when I get transferred and end up in Mecklenburg, Block has went home and came back. When I'm in re-entry, leaving prison for the first time in the last time, Block is on his way back. That's amazing, man. That's just crazy to me. Because over the years of me doing 33 years, I've seen dudes lose their life for a lot less. I've seen dudes get gunned down on the street. I've seen dudes go go from prison to go home and get gunned down on the street for for whatever reason. So for Block to still be alive, man, you got to say, you know, is he lucky or is he cursed? Because he's still in prison, you know, but he's seen the streets. You know, two different times, three, two different occasions after having been sentenced to a life sentence. And um, 
from what I know about Block Man, me just personally, me being around him, because I don't base my opinion of what society say about a person. I don't base my opinion on what other people think about a person. If I know the person, I base my opinion based upon my dealings with that person. And and I personally never really had problems with Block. I don't. I haven't personally never really had problems with him, so I can't, you know, impose on him a, a, a magnifying glass that other people will because I actually dealt with him and know him personally. But Block is a particular uh, individual, man. He is a particular individual. He has a certain type of mind frame, from my understanding of whatever he feels is what he gonna do at that moment, and it don't matter what it is, and it don't matter what the cost is. I've seen Block in all different types of scenarios. I've seen him in war mode. I've seen him in fights. I've seen him in, you know, kill mode. I've seen him in, you know, uh, <clears throat> I done lost my mind mode. I've seen Block in all types of mode. I've seen him intoxicated. I've seen him sober. I've seen him somewhat fitting in shape. I've seen him beaten down and, and, and look like he in the, the depression. You know, I've seen him in all different types of states. One thing I have never seen him in was in freedom. I've never seen Block in the free world. You know, I never seen him. By the time I got out, he was going in again. So I've never seen him in the free world. But I do know in the penitentiary, especially in Virginia, um, you know, Block, Block earned his respect. He earned his respect because, you know, in prison, it ain't nothing given to you. You got to take everything. And Block, Block was a dude that you had to respect because of the way he come. The way he coming, he coming straight forward and he ain't biting his tongue, which is uh, ironic because when he get mad, he literally <laughs> bites his tongue. But for speaking up, he going to say what he mean, he going to mean what he say, and he going to stand on it no matter what come with it. That part I do know because that part I have witnessed and I've seen myself. And um, like I say, man, in the younger days, man, no one would ever even think that if you were lucky enough to get out on the life sentence, especially to get a pardon, that you would go out on the street and do anything that will immediately bring you back, knowing that it will bring you back, knowing that you just escaped death. You know what I'm saying? Most dudes don't even have that type of heart. They don't even have that type of, you know, be, to experience this and then to volunteer by your actions and saying that you want some more. That's a different type of dude. But when you do that, you're standing by a conviction that you have already put in your mind and put in your heart and put out in the universe that if I get out, this is what it is. This is what's going to happen. And that's what he did. And he stood on his word. One thing, if Block is nothing else, he is a man of his word. You know, if he say he going to get you, he going to get you. If he say he got a problem with you, he going to let you know. If he say he bucking, he bucking. You know, and I done seen Block, like I told y'all in some of the stories, man. You know, Block fight the police, man. I seen him fight the police with the the actual song on Fight the Power. <laughs> you know, and and um yeah, man, he he just a different type of dude, man. So when so when my homie was asking me about him, I was telling him he was like, Wow. And I was like, Yeah, man, he locked back up. He was like, Then he and I was like, Yeah, he did. He got out and then he got out again. He didn't even know that Block had got out a second time. You know what I'm saying? Block got out two times before I ever even left the prison. You know what I'm saying? With two different life sentences and he is as I'm setting up in prison and he didn't got out twice and I haven't even got out one time. You know, so it just be like that sometime. And it ain't no reflection on him. It ain't nothing that he did or didn't do. It's just the way the system is. The system is 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 wicked, man. It's wicked. You know, and my homeboy made the suggestion that he said, Well, I think they let him out, man, because they knew he'd come back. And I think they didn't let you out because they knew you wouldn't come back. Now, I don't know what that philosophy is or if there's any truth to it, but that used to be a big saying in the prison. That, you know, they're going to let the dudes go that they know won't come back because they know when they get you back again, they got deeper hooks in you. You know what I'm saying? They got deeper hooks in you where it's going to be harder for you to get out. So, you know, as I always say, duck the hooks, man, but... Yeah, I've seen Block in every type of scenario you could think of, man. I've seen him in, 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 in some crazy, crazy scenarios, man. Crazy. And I've seen him do things that the average person wouldn't do, you know, because his heart was that big. I don't think Block it was the type of dude neither did was uh, no one, I feel, no man that's living and breathing and walking and talking. I don't think no man that's doing that want to die. 
because they do too much to stay alive. But I do think there's certain people that's not afraid of death, and I think Block is one of them because he put himself in all these types of scenarios where he could have been and possibly some would say should have been dead, but he's not. You know what I'm saying? And he's still breathing, man. So, you know, I don't know exactly how he's doing. I don't know exactly where he's at, but I just know that uh, he's one of the most unique dudes that I ever met, man, just by the way he carries himself and what he does and what he will do and what he won't do. But like I say, I've seen Block just snap and go from zero to a thousand, man, in less than five seconds. You know, less than five seconds, his whole demeanor changed, his whole body language changed, his whole tone and voice changed, and he chewing his tongue, and then he just go from, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. And, he, and he got a lisp, and he just go from there to, whatever, Whew. let's go, and he ready to go, and he ready to go, man, and he is not playing no games, period, you know. Um, I told y'all, man, I done seen him do everything from, Go behind the child line, they, 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 they beat up a dude on the kitchen line that was just, just talking trash to him. You know what I'm saying? And when I say things like that, that that is more than what y'all probably understand. It ain't just like you were in a restaurant. Stuff. No, this is in prison. I seen this man leave out of the kitchen, go around to the other side, to the back side, fake his way inside a kitchen prison that you can't get in without ID, without uh, information, without... You know, and he gets in there and gets on the line and whoops a dude on the line while we in there trying to eat. <laughs> I've seen Block climb over a fence, man, and go to from segregation to population just to lift weights and fight the police and won't go in and shut the whole yard down. You know, I've seen him set off a riot between D.C. and Richmond just by getting up and standing on the table and throwing a tray at a guy. You know, I seen him play football and knock dudes out. I seen him play football and get his head split open and still want to play and don't want to go to medical. <laughs> I seen him give his TV away and trade his TV for a radio because he get tired of watching TV. TV at the time is like two summer. Radio at the time is probably like $90, 100 You know, I seen him just do all types of crazy stuff. I seen him get money in the mail, man, 500 thousand dollars from his homeboys who still look up to him and still you know treat him like the legend on the streets that, that he's considered to be and he'll get a thousand dollars and just buy go to the commissary when we ain't had no limit on the commissary and go buy six seven hundred dollars worth of stuff and just bring it all out in the party and just let everybody eat you know this is all the same guy you know what I'm saying? This is all the same. Do I see them play with dudes in the party, get mad and lose his mind and just almost kill a dude if don't nobody stop him and he just say he just blanked out and he ain't mean to do it and I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? I see him play with knives and make knives and just want to look at him and just hope somebody mess with him so he can use it and see how it works. I see him fight the police and wrap a iron cord around his hand and hold an iron in his hand and hit a police up on his neck and rip half of his chin out and get sent out of state. I seen him being put in an underground dungeon on Mellonburg with the double doors and set the whole cell on fire. I see him be stuck in segregation and they come in there to fix the window and they leave a hammer in there and he keep the hammer and beat the door down and tell them to come get it and they afraid to come get it. Just crazy, man. Some of the things you've seen and some of the things I've seen and some of the people I've met and some of the people I've been around and all of the things that I'm telling y'all that he displayed that you would even notice that about him if you was around him because if he if you was causing with him, he's going to be causing with you. If you cracking jokes, he's going to be laughing. If you having fun, he's going to be having fun. But he has all of these different type of personalities in him. You know what I'm saying? He has these different type of personalities in him. I seen him come out in the block sometimes and just don't want to talk to nobody and don't want nobody to say nothing to him. And he was just talking the night before to everybody and having fun and laughing, joking, and playing. So I don't know what you call it. I don't know if you call it bipolar. I don't know what you call it. But all I know is when he's serious, he's serious. And when he's not, he's not. You know, but I do know he's probably one of the only people that can actually say 
that they came home two different times on two different life sentences on two different type of cases and was able to walk the streets and, you know, and only eventually to be put back in there and, you know, on his third run in the penitentiary and don't know when he's going to get out. So it's that's just crazy to me. And I was explaining that to my homeboy because he knew we all was in the trenches when we was young. We was in our early 20s. We was all in the same prison together. We was all, you know, dreaming and hoping and thinking about one day when we get out, what will we do? If we can get out, are we going to get out? You know what I'm saying? How long we got to do? Are we going to make it to that day? All of these things, man. And for, you know, him to not know the whole situation about what was going on with Block, because he brought up some other guys' names, too, who have met unfortunate ends. You know, dudes that we started out with way back then in, in the late 80s and stuff. Some of these dudes ain't here no more. Some of these dudes are OD. Some of these dudes that came out the street and brought the penitentiary mentality to the street and got gunned down. Some of these dudes and came out and committed more crimes and back in there. You know, some of these dudes came out, committed crimes and got killed in the commission of a crime. All of these dudes, man, that... You know, we young and in the penitentiary and we ain't even know and we just getting to meet and these these people become like, you know, it, some of them become family. Some of them become like still like a, a serious part of your history because you're around them. This is like growing up with people in your neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Even if you grew up with the dude down the street in your neighborhood, if you didn't like him, you knew everything about him and you felt like you knew him because you grew up with him. You see him every day. You see him go to school. You get off school together. You, you know, you see him in the park. You see him at the basketball court. You see him in the gym. You, you, you're around him all day, so you feel like you know these people. So when something happened to him, it still kind of affects you whether you were super cool with him or not. You're like, hey, because it's somebody that you know. This is how it was for us coming in the penitentiary, all us in the penitentiary in our early 20s, and we all of us facing years and years and years and decades in prison. And some of us facing life sentences in prison, never knowing that we'll see the streets again. These people are part of our history. They're part of our life. You know, and if you go to penitentiary young like we did, we, we, we actually be around these people more than we've been around our family. Once you pass 15, 20 years or 20 years, you, you, you would have been around them as long as you've been around your family. You know, if you come to penitentiary at 20 years old and you do 25 years, you've been around people in the penitentiary longer than you have been around your actually, actual blood family. You haven't even been around them that long. I've been around people in prison longer than I've been around my, you know, my blood brother, my blood sister, my mother. You understand that? Ain't that crazy? I've been around people. In real life, in penitentiary, longer than I've been around or in the presence of my own mother, my birth mother. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So you have some type of empathy or sympathy for these people that you know, whether you like them or not, just because of the association. You know? So I feel for Block, you know what I'm saying? Because I know what it was like for us being in the penitentiary at the age we was at going through what we was going through, not just with each other, but with the administration, with the struggle, with the system, with the with the courtrooms. I know, you know what I'm saying? So you got to feel something like that if you got any type of soul or, or anything like that. So that was the conversation that me and him was having. It was like, man, that's crazy, you know? And I'm talking to him and he waiting to get out, you know, again. So... It's just crazy, man, how things turn out. And then with all the things that's been going on lately, man, like I got dudes that I know that been locked up that just been took a left turn. And, you know, it's it's like, you know, they ain't on point no more. And you got some that done OD'd and you got some that done passed away. And you got some that just hit rock bottom out here where they feel like, you know, going back is, is an option. So it's just crazy, man. So, you, don't, you, you know, I don't know if that was block mind frame. I do not know that. All I do know is that within the first couple of years of my bit, I was around him, so I known him for the majority of, you know what I'm saying, my life, of my adult life, you know what I'm saying, I've known him, you know, so, uh, yeah, but man, um, one thing I know, one thing for certain, two things for sure, though, you know, Block gonna do Block wherever he go, <laughs> wherever he go, and if somebody, you know, don't understand that or somebody, you know, invade his space, 
he gonna act like block. You know, he gonna act like block. You know, and it's unfortunate, man, that a lot of us that grow up in that system, the system end up winning because it end up getting the best of us whether we know it or not. You know, even if we get out, some of us get out, but the system is still in our head. So we doomed anyway if we can't get it out of our brain. We can't get it out of our head because, you know, that's the most important tool that we have. That's our compass. You know what I'm saying? Our brain, that's our compass. So that's going to take us as far as we're going to go, man. But, yeah, it's just I just thought about that, man, because, like I say, my brother brought his name up and a couple of other dudes, and a couple of the other dudes he brought up, unfortunately, they ain't even here no more, which is another sad uh, situation, man. But, um, yeah, man, but I seen Block, man. I seen Block do some um, <laughs> some wild stuff, man, that uh, you won't see too many people do. But no matter what he did, he always stood on his, man. He always took his responsibility. He ain't going to stand on ten toes no matter what. So, you know. <clears throat> yeah, but uh, shout out to Block, man. I wish him well. I hope he doing all right. I hope he, uh, you know, I hope he can get find some peace in his life, man. Because, like I say, without having that, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. No matter how much money you got, no matter how much anything you got, if you ain't got peace, you ain't got nothing, man. So, Shout out to Southside Block, man, and um, I just wanted to drop this on y'all. I know this is not a normal video, you know, but just stay tuned for a little different stuff, a little just then the third. I'm working on a lot of different things over here, but, you know, I just had to talk about that because I was on the phone and that was on my brain, man. But shout out to Southside Block, man, and shout out to everybody else out here, man, that's fighting their demons, man. Fighting your demons, man. Just always remember you can win. Just swing and keep swinging, champ. Swing and keep swinging, you know, but you know doing time man is deeper than what it seems man. It's deeper man It's very it's, it's deeper man. It's very very deep man. It's it's up here too, man You got to beat that first, but y'all let me know what y'all think man talk to me in the comments I talk back man new videos on deck man. I'm back man TBP nation man We on the road to 100k. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get over this by by now Let's get over it. Let's get this out of the way Let's get the 100K out the way. Let's throw that up on the wall back there, you know, for a while before we give it to Mama Pam. Let's do that, man, so we can just go ahead and do what we're doing. Y'all stay tuned. New merch coming. Book is definitely coming. Um, we working on the meet in Greece. After the 100K, we're going to have a meet in Greece. We got new merch coming, uh, female merch, male merch. Let's get it. Let's go. TBP Nation, big love to y'all, man. Salute, 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 man. And um, by all means, man. Stay sucker free, man. Duck them crooks and duck them hooks, man. Bam, bam, boom, boom, bam. Boom. We out here, man. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's go. Honey K. TBP Nation, man. Salute. We out here, man. We gone. Peace. Bam. The bank is special. Yeah. Pure delicious. Pure delicious. Out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in.